How's it going, Pokemon trainers? This is Trainer Connor, and you're going to be watching battle number 60 of my Oros Wi-Fi battle videos. Today's match is a, I guess, um, I don't know what to describe it, actually. It's a match I had with Nathan, and he is from Twitter, of course, and uh, he's an awesome guy. If you want to go follow him on Twitter, his link will be in the description. But this battle, though, uh, I wanted to have a match, and Nathan wanted to have a match one day, and he was like, you know, looking for a match and all that. I was like, you know what, let's battle, because why not, right? And uh, I was not expecting this kind of team preview. If you look at the screen here, he's got all legendary Pokemon. Well, not all of them, but like most of them, such as Primal Grudon, Kiram White, and uh, I guess another legendary type Pokemon would be Greninja, because he's technically Uber. I'm using a kind of a weird team centered around uh, Rotom Frost and Gabalion and Dragon Dance Shiny for Alligator I got from Leo. Alright, so this is going to be kind of a tough fight, but you know, it'll be it'll be fun. So if you enjoy this Wi-Fi battle, be sure to give me a like and subscribe. So in the beginning here he's got a green ninja. I was not really expecting protect from him. I was expecting him to go with an ice type move, probably ice beam to hit Dragonite. So I switch out and go into Cobalion and then he goes into his Primo Grugon and wow. That was very threatening. We're going to get some entry hazards because it's going to help out in this battle for sure. I'm going to go for a close combat afterwards. And that's just the sheer bulk and, I guess, the prowess of Primal Grugon. Fortunately, uh, he missed a precipitate blaze. I don't know how to say that, but it's a very strong move indeed, and I don't want that to hit my Cobalion, so we're going to go into Rotom Frost for a moment, and then we have a double switch. I go back into Cobalion, expecting a different type of move to hit Rotom Frost, but he goes into Charizard, which is great, that's awesome, because I don't think he has a Rapid Spinner. So I wasn't actually sure what kind of Mega the Charizard would be in this battle, but we find out that it's Charizard S, which is fine by me. We're going to go with a Volt Switch, going to Fueranas, my semi seer I have not used him in like forever, but I don't think we're going to have a nice showing of him in this battle because Fuerlitz does a ton of damage to this thing. Granted, it's a Charizard X and it's a Mega, and Feralas is not very bulky per se, so that's kind of why you don't see him doing much in pretty much anything, I guess. But here is my shiny Feraligator. This thing is a Dragon Dance set. I could have gone for a Dragon Dance there, but I guess I was more threatened with, you know, with Primo Grudon in the back and everything. If I had set up a Dragon Dance, I could have swept his entire team. Except for the likes of his Megas and, or his, his Primo Grudon and his Mega uh, Charizard X, but I guess he already killed him, so. I see what he's there. But anyway, so, ha! Huh, uh, here's Shirashi. I'm gonna go for Draco Meteor and Superior is not going to be a too superior in this battle, uh, because, well, like, like, Leaf Storm doesn't do very much, and Dragon Pulse, which you'll see here, won't do very much either. Uh, he does paralyze me, which is like, oh, that's a little unfortunate, because I was not expecting that. Uh, paralyzing Jirashi is okay in this scenario, I mean, I'm not too bothered by it, uh, but the lack of you know, attacking is there, you know, because I could get paralyzed at any given moment. But we don't get paralyzed in any of those turns, and we're able to go with a couple of side shots to finish him off, and we're good there. This Shirashi is from the event from 2010, 2009, I'm not really sure when exactly, but it's a nice Pokemon there. There's a lot of giveaways or kind of, like, events going on in the celebration of Pokemon 20. I'm hoping to get some more legendaries throughout the year. 
which would be very cool. Uh, here's Primo Grugon again, and he's just gonna go for another Pacific Blaze. I knew he might have Stone Edge, but my Dragonite has multi-scale and that thing is going to come into huge help because I take the Stone Edge really well and I set up in his face with a Dragon Dance. But unfortunately for me, or I guess unfortunately for my opponent, he went for a Protect. Seeing Protect, I'm thinking that this is a VGC style team in singles. Which is like, oh, because VGC this year utilizes uh, Legendaries and it's a double battle format, but this is a single battle that we're having here. So I was able to roost up with Draco and also uh, I have a I have a Lumberry to get rid of the status condition from Gargafor, which I was actually not sure. Like, I was not expecting it to have Will O Wisp. That's a new thing on me. But we dodge it nevertheless. Kiram White is here and I was not sure what to do at this point because look how much this does. Over half. And I resisted it. Uh, we can try going for an Iron Head and hoping for a kind of a, a flinch or two. Now the reason I switched out from Dragonite earlier is just because I was fearing that the Kiram was scarfed. And unless he was scarfed, I had to switch out or I could have you uh, lose my, lost my Dragonite, there we go. Uh, yeah, just to be safe. And now I try going for a Volt Switch and that didn't work out too well because Primo Groudon dodges it. It looks like I have a big disadvantage, but you know, we can hopefully manage that. Now right there he opts to go with a Sword Stance. I'm like, okay, we need to get a lot more damage in Iron Head. Close combat we go, and we almost take O him, and another Pacific Blade comes in, and he's just going to destroy Kavalian, which is okay at this point. This means I can go into Cold Hands, who's scarfed. And right there, I actually went for Trick, because I thought I could trick my item over, so he can walk himself into Pacific Blade, which would be very hilarious, but that didn't work out too well, because it didn't work, obviously. Now, I... Switch out and go back into Dragon Knight. He expected that he went for a Stone Edge, but he missed it. But you know, that's fine. But then he gets a critical hit, so that didn't matter overall. Uh, which kind of sucks because at, at this point, I only have Rotom Frost and one other Pokemon. So we're going to have to play kind of conservative. Um, I fortunately hit Blizzard in the sun, the harsh sunlight, which is a 20% chance, but I was like, you know what, let's just go for it, because I was at a, a, a sheer disadvantage, and uh, yeah, so that's kind of why I was like, you know, let's just go for it, and we do, so here I'm forced to sacrifice for Alligator, I'm sorry, but you know, I am a choice scarf cold hands, which means that I could go for a Thunderbolt because I was locked in on Blizzard earlier. I could switch up my moves. But seeing that he's going for Dark Pulse means that, you know, we can just go for a regular Blizzard and we can take him out. And then his last Pokemon is Ice Buddy, his Kiram White, and he's just going to go down to the Steltos and we win the match. So I guess the sacrifice of Feraligator was not really necessary, but, you know, I did it. I will never do that again, hopefully. Uh, but that's going to be the end of that awesome match. I, I, I thought that that was a, you know, a funny type match where it's like, you know, I was going to have a nice match with Nathan, and then he just brings Ubers to the match. And I wanted to see how I played with those Pokemon that he had. Okay, so that's the end of the match. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did enjoy, be sure to give me a like and subscribe. And then I will post another Wi-Fi bell here real soon. Alright, have a great day, Pokemon Terrace. And I'll see you next time.